we should sort of like set the scene. You and I have been shooting these promos for days. It's like 11.30 at night. All the crew's gone home. And we thought, just let's just hang out like the collectors and fans would love this stuff. And let's just talk TV. And you and I are of about the same age. And we watch, watch the same shows and ate the same Pop-Tarts. We were, you know, both from the same can of cheese whiz. Rangel's brother. <laughs> so look. You know, I know what television meant to me. I'm happy to tell you all about it, but we're here for you. So I want to know, you know, were you like me? Did you have a TV in your bedroom? Were you allowed to watch? Who had that kind of money? TV in the bedroom? My TV my, was black and white. It was this big, but uh, it's where I saw Morgan and Mindy, The Love Oak, Fantasy Island, Six. Happy Days, Love yeah. Doc Cotter. Yeah. That's the stuff that raised me. I had my subscription to Dynamite Magazine. <laughs> I mean, that's, look. If anybody out there has a complete run of Dynamite Magazine, I would, like I would buy that in a heart. Like did you collect Wacky Packs? I did. What was your favorite series? For me, it was series one with the Big the Big Macs and the Captain Hunch. Remember that? Yeah, look, I'm, I'm a pop culture junkie, right? That's why right. I work here. Everybody knows where they were when Elvis died. Or we all know what we felt like when, when uh, Jerry Ewing was shot. Especially when here. <laughs> yeah, well, so I think that uh, TV we is kind of a timeline that we all hang our personal memories on, and I think like what you were saying, it's not just the TV shows because if you watch some of them back, some of them don't age that well. But what we bring to it, the reason why you know these pieces that Heritage is offering are so valuable, there's so much competition for these pieces, is the shows were great at that period of time. Um, the objects are recognizable and exciting and, you know, visually exciting. But I think at the end, what people are buying are their own memories. Mm -hmm. They're buying their memories of, I remember hanging out with my dad and watching David Letterman and talking. And I remember just, you know, sitting on the floor and watching Star Trek. And my mom was preparing the, the Swanson TV dinners. And you, had, you later we were going to have Jiffy Pop popcorn that made stovetop and all that stuff for better or for worse, is bundled in with the show. So I think that's the, the, the secret sauce of television. It's been a fascinating few days to spend with you on these sets. I mean, horrifying when you say fascinating. Well, I didn't want to say it. <laughs> but it's been interesting to watch you and to watch everybody else's reactions to all of these sets. Like when people go stand where Norm used to sit, when they stand behind the bar, when they look at and feel like they're in the bunkers living room. As someone who's spent a good part of their life caring for, collecting, preserving, serving these pieces, I can only imagine that this is not the easiest thing in the world for you to part with these pieces. Yeah. Yeah. I, there is, uh, on the one hand, um, first of all, the uh, first statement, so blessed to have had this journey and to have as a job, you know, spending my days in Mayberry and Hooterville and the Twilight Zone and living in TV and getting to meet these heroes and getting the honor of caring for these pieces. It, it has been so fabulous. Um, it, there is a bittersweet sort of peak in quality to this and that my goal since the early 90s was there should be a TV museum. There should be a museum dedicated to the most important, consumed, influential, and beloved medium of all storytelling, which is television. And I tried for well over 20 years to engage uh, the studios, networks, theme parks, casinos, cities, municipalities, in, hey, let's, I have the stuff, I've done the heavy lifting, we have the stuff, I have the relationships, let's put some money towards building a TV museum. And unfortunately, in the last couple of years, uh, I came to the sad realization that it wasn't going to happen. It took uh, the Motion Picture Academy 110 years to get their shit together and open the museum. And if we're just speaking truthfully, the reason is it's very expensive to open a museum. To keep it going is very expensive, and it doesn't make a lot of money. So to find somebody who's willing to say, let's just do the right thing because it's the right thing to do, it, it didn't happen. So. I was talking with my wife Amber and my longtime friend and publicist, Jeff Abraham, and I sort of looked at them and said, you know what, 
it's time that this stuff goes back to the fans. You know, I had this lofty idea. And maybe it would have happened. Okay, I'm not sad that it didn't happen. I'm frustrated. I don't quite understand it still. But I want these pieces to go back to the fans. You know, you never have to convince a fan of the importance of these TV shows. You know, I had a meeting earlier today with your uh, cataloging department, right? And this is going to be, by the time you guys see and hear this, you're going to receive a gigantic, massive book that uh, sort of uh, walks you through the collection. And usually, you know, when you're in an auction scenario, you're like, okay, we have to find 10 pieces to highlight. These are going to be on the back cover, the front cover, and the centerfold. And the problem we were having for two hours is how do we how do we find the top 50 pieces? I mean, and everybody at the table said, no, it's got to be the genie bottle. And somebody else would say, uh, no, it's got to be, you know, Maxwell Smart's phone. Or it, it, this sale is so filled with treasures. I mean, it's almost dizzying. And uh, yeah, I'm sad to see them go, but I would say equal parts. I'm curious and excited to see who's going to carry on the journey, who's going to see to the continuous of these, of these pieces. And let them bring joy and light into other people's lives. And just like television, maybe these pieces will live on. Well, I can't thank you enough for sharing them with us for these last few days. Certainly, like I said at the beginning of all this, I'm sitting inside a memory. That's something you simply cannot put a price on. So I thank you for that. I thank you for all this. Cheers.